never seen one quite this color. Yes, it's, um, it's usual because it's not a rosé. <laughs> it's Sarah, not. you know that our focus in, in the series that we're going to be filming, our focus is on the concept of terroir. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what is terroir to you? Terroir is a, is a place where men, soil, sun, uh, rain, uh, make a special, uh, a special country, special product. Mm -hmm. uh, when you, when a cow eat uh, uh, the herb here, the cow has not the same taste as another, another cow. After you have to learn what you prefer, what terroir you prefer. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's something that is fragile and that we can use it but not abuse it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I don't know if to... Well, that's a very good question. And uh, you, you can ask this to many people and you have uh, as many answers. Uh, the terroir is, of course, first of all, the soil and uh, the combination of the soil and the climate. Mm -hmm. Then you have also the microclimate because if you are facing north, south or whatever, it makes a difference. Uh, then I think that if you relate the quality of the wine to the terroir, you must take into account the vine. Because if you have a poor vine, you know, like uh, poor clones, mm -hmm. that is producing mm -hmm. a very high quantity and not very good quality, uh, in a way, the, 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 what we call in French, le matériel végétal, which is the vines, mm -hmm. I think is part of the terroir. Yeah. And, uh, but again, the terroir doesn't exist if there is no human hand to, you know, to look after it. So, is man part of the terroir? That I don't know, but it's a part of the expression of the terroir. It's part of the expression. So, it's the soil, it's the climate, the right. microclimate, right. Yeah. then the vine, the, yeah, the specific quality of the vine, mm. and then, finally, the intervention of man, and, and all those Qualities together ma make a good terroir. Yeah, good. Thank Hopefully. you. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Qu'est-ce que c'est le terroir pour toi? Pour moi, le terroir, c'est le pinot. For me, the terroir, if you consider the pinot grape, for instance, in Burgundy, the Pinot makes different styles of wine without possible modification by the hand of man. I have the very example with some wines in savigny les bones for instance. I have land on middle slope with clay soil. On the other side of the road, 150 yards away, it's called pernant Vergelès, and it's nothing but stones. My friend, who is at that side of the road, makes Pernod Vergelès. I make savigny les bones And even if I was to make the wine at his place, and he would make it at my place, and this has already happened a couple of times for sickness or accident in the family, our wines will still reflect exactly the character of the soil. So this is terrible for me, what man cannot alter or change. So for you terroir is what the soil produces and man cannot influence or change. Very interesting. Terroir was for us in 1980, let me think, 75, 78, 1978, first harvest on the Côte de Nuit. We had planted new wine on the Côte de Nuit village, whereas all our domain is on Côte de Bonne, Thomas, Savigny, etc. And we arrived on the Côte de Nuit in Comblanchien, and after three years, first harvest, over a very small, very small harvest, only 10 barrels. Now, in average, we make about 40 barrels. So it was a small harvest, the roots were not very deep, and yet, at three years of age, when we tasted the first wine, 
Ah, it was code de, de nuit. Et, et, et nous avions déjà, uh, And we had six or seven different appellations just uh, next to it. But three years and the terroir was there. And you tasted that earlier on. That is terroir. Merci. Well, I'm sitting here with Mr. Joël Rémy, who is uh, a vine grower, to follow the exact French interpretation. They don't call themselves wine makers, they call themselves vigneron vine grower. And uh, Mr. Rémy has uh, several properties on the finest pieces of land of Burgundy. And I would like to ask him what his interpretation of terroir might be. So, Monsieur Rémy, qu'est-ce que c'est que le terroir pour vous? Disons qu'en Bourgogne, je considère... Let's say that in Burgundy, there are several terroirs. One is represented by the richness of the soil, which is a gift, a present of nature. And then there is the terroir which depends on the skill and savoir-faire of man. Terroir is the sum total of both, the wealth and passion of man and the exceptional material legacy transmitted by the earth, the climate and the soil. This is a bottle which is full of earth, full of terroir. To use all the words, we have created all the terroirs of the domain there. In the words, all the names are inscribed on this bottle and they represent a thin layer of soil coming from this particular plot of the domain and you can see through the different appellations the diversity of the soils that constitute our terroir. Starting from sandy soils with, that have better drainage, lighter soils, and the more you go up and you'll find steeper slopes with more limestone and different density and more grains What's also striking is the difference in color, changing with each soil. Soils with deep layers in their structure like chorel et bone or bone village go towards ochre or light maroon. And the more you go up in the Appalachians, the more you have brownish color, even going to reddish tones. And when you still go higher, like in Pomar, you see there is more choke, more lime and milestone, with little excrements of rocks, and even flintstones, and some quartz crystals. This is a very old vine. We pulled it out a couple of years ago, and the foot is just over a hundred years old. Big one is is one indicator, but the farther out you get, the bigger. Oh, yeah.